Hello, my name is Pete Jenkins from ISS Training Limited and welcome to this series of short surveillance training videos on covert surveillance. In this series of short videos, we're going to look at surveillance detection. Surveillance detection by anti-surveillance and also by counter-surveillance. Now the two disciplines are very different, although they are both still uh, forms of surveillance detection. Anti-surveillance is what you would do or what I would do if we think we're going to be followed or we go think we're going to be put under surveillance or we suspect that we are. It's what we would do in order to detect any watchers or followers. Counter surveillance is very different. It's when we bring in somebody else. It could be a single person, it could be a full um, counter surveillance team. And what they effectively do is watch our back through a series of what we call choke points. And it's counter surveillance in its very basic form that we're going to look at now. The principles of counter surveillance are very sophisticated. But what we're going to try and do now is break it down into various parts in a simple format. A lot of people get confused about counter surveillance and anti surveillance, getting it wrong, getting it mixed up the wrong way. Um, when you quite often you ask security professionals, what's the difference between anti surveillance and counter surveillance? They can't often tell you. Well, it's, um, it's going twice around and around about. We're, you're watching the watchers, aren't you? Well, sort of, but not quite right. So we're going to dispel some myths and look at counter. Why are we going to do counter in the first place? Well, it might be because um, you're watching the back or you're protecting somebody that's going to have a meeting somewhere. It could be a journalist who's meeting an informant. It could be um, a high net worth individual that's going from A to B and they are targeted for surveillance. It may be somebody carrying high value goods that's open to attack or robbery. So we may, there are various reasons why we're going to put somebody through a counter surveillance route to identify whether they're being followed or not. I mentioned the surveillance detection route. Now we cannot be doing this commercially over three or four hours or days. So we'll try and um, nip it in the bud within about 50 minutes to an hour. So that's how the, the time duration of our surveillance route or counter is going to be. So we're going to have to do a desktop plan looking at a map first, identifying a start point and a finish point. We also we need to be clear by a certain point. We don't want to finish the exercise of the operation at the actual finish point because the surveillance might be trying to establish where the finish point is. So we've got to do it before then. Let's look at simple principles. First of all, we're going to take a route. The route <coughs> would not be on a fixed linear route. It wouldn't be on a major A road going from Oxford to London, for example. We need a change in direction. We need to deviate the route slightly so that other, anybody else going along that road will be picked up and you cannot differentiate whether they're third party or whether they're actually surveillance or not. So we need to de um, deviate the route slightly, as I'll come on to, um, to demonstrate that. We're going to use four choke points. Four. Choke point one, choke point two, choke point three, and choke point four. And in this example, we're going to have somebody at each choke point, and we'll look at these in a bit more detail shortly. So we're going to have four choke points. And the idea behind it is that the principal, whoever that may be, cash in transit, a journalist, etc., they will drive a predetermined route where they will go and pass through choke point one, which also has to remain covert, through choke point three, keeping on the move, through choke point four, etc. And as you pass through choke point one, the person there will be writing a list. And they will be identifying at least 10 to 12 vehicles that are behind the principal. And we'll write them down. They'll go through choke point two. And choke point two will do the same. They will record a list of the next 10 or 12 vehicles, including taxis and motorbikes, that come through choke point two behind the principal. The team leader, as we go through, will then look at this list, 
because we've got four choke points and we've now got four lists of vehicles that have come through each and he will say, well, that vehicle was seen there. It was also seen there. It was seen there at choke point three and also down here at choke point four. He might also say a second vehicle was also sighted. It was sighted here. It was sighted again at choke point two. For some reason, it wasn't seen at choke point three, but it was also seen at choke point four. Now, because we've got four choke points, the idea is, is that we break the bounds of coincidence. It's got to be beyond coincidence that those two vehicles were seen at those three choke points and that one there. Well, I can surmise from this, one vehicle wasn't seen there. It's obviously been the 15th in line or it's made a devious route or it's got lost or detached or it's gone the wrong way, which is why we have four choke points. So that is the idea behind it. So we have four choke points. The principle drives from one to the other. We co-relate, um, have a list, and then we decide, is he in fact under surveillance or not? And that's our answer. But we're gonna look at this in a bit more detail now. I mentioned the fact that we're gonna count the next 10 to 12 vehicles that are gonna be behind your principle. Basically, any surveillance is more likely to be behind than in front of the principle or their target as it would be. So why 10? Well, if this is the principle, a target of surveillance, any surveillance, the lead car or the eyeball, as we refer to it, is likely to possibly have a couple of cars, third party, as cover. If it's a two-handed team, they're gonna have a backup car, which is gonna be close by, but somewhere behind the eyeball. And again, they may have a couple of cars as cover to give them a bit of distance. If it's a three car team, you'll have our tail end Charlie or trail car. They'll be at the rear. They could be quite further back because they've had to um, do a handover and they've been pushed back slightly. But again, they could have a couple of cars blocking or as cover. So what we've got is our surveillance team target, our principal. Then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cars which is why we have to count at least 10 to 12 vehicles that might be behind our principal to enable us to catch all of the team. 